The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Monday. This is the March uh, 28th session. Of course, we've got until Thursday when we wrap up on the 31st. That monthly candle is going to be so important. Uh, let's see what happens over the next few days. Is there buying that's going to be, keep coming in? Uh, the beginning, end of the month, beginning of the month type buying. I, this is going to be a tough one. Uh, and it's really important to see a pretty decent candle close in these monthly charts because uh, a tremendous weakness going into Thursday is going to suggest that there's a really nice move. We've got the Dow down 106 and 34,756 going from the 32,272 low. It bounces about uh, um, 2,000 points to 34,179. And then it fails and it comes back in the H pattern, holds beautifully at 32,575. And then what does it do? It comes up almost in a straight line, goes to a peak C in the Chapman Wave methodology. Let me just show you this for people that are perhaps new to my work. Where can I find it? See if I can click on that one right there. Yep, we got it. Chapman Wave methodology, very simple technique that can get a little complex after a while, but initially all you're looking for is the lowest low bar. You need to count each successively higher peak, peak A, peak B, you can go all the way to a peak G, higher peaks, but it's at D, the fourth highest peak that other things can happen. You can see the sharp move down or it can recycle and give you an instant chapter wave, instant restart for another four peaks to the upside. But the whole idea is that when it goes from a buy signal to a buy mode, it can trigger an upgrade that essentially takes it from a buy signal to a buy mode with the implication that there should be at least, at least four higher peaks. Peak A, one, peak B, two, peak C, three, peak D is the fourth one. And lo and behold, what did we get from the buy signal that we uh, got with, that was triggered? Uh, that was, let me just get this going here. So the buy signal that was triggered on the 15th of March at 3.30.75 in the DIA. That was a Tuesday morning. Uh, what? It'll be two weeks tomorrow. Um, and that was right there. And we've been long and we've taken a little, a little bit off. And then the objective was to get to at least a D. And the moment it broke uh, peak C's high by one penny, we took a tad off again. So we're still long. It's nicely above the 200 period moving average. That's the orange line. The nine period moving average is sharply above the 14. That's a very big positive. Uh, that's one of, one of a, a key ingredients that we are looking for in terms of confirmation. The MACD and the daily, the MACD, the histogram is starting to pull back a little bit. But th this is really a very wide opening between the nine period differential and the slower 26 period moving average, the red line. And the histogram is vertical these very nicely. And the stochastics flat at 90 percent. These are the things we look for to sustain a move. On balance volume is the lag, which is in a way good because if it's still to go to the overbought area, that means we can still go quite a bit higher. But if it starts to stall here, we've got to keep our eyes open for that. Weekly chart went above the inside track repellent zone. Uh, it was a propellant zone, became a repellent zone. Now it's just in the middle between the green and the pink rising little mini channel. Good action. The MACD hasn't yet crossed positive. If it's going to still cross positive, we've got a lot more to go on the upside. If it fails and deflects lower like it's done, oh, I put a circle. I don't usually do that. I'm not sure why I did that before. Let me just change it. Normally what I do is I show a rectangle formation right here. And then there's another rectangle formation right here. And that was the failure at the top at 36,952, the all-time high, January the 5th. Uh, it was the 5th. Yeah, January the 5th of this year. And we slumped down to 32,272. And here we are at 34,750 at this point, down 111. And there's that monthly chart holding nicely above the 9 period moving average, holding very well above the uh, 33,748 level of the 14 period moving average. Huh. 
This is going to be the week. It's really one of the most important weeks. And I'll talk about it in terms of the S&P. S&P had a fabulous candle. Even now it's acting well. It's up two and a half at 45.45. Leg D, uh, that changes. That was printed from Friday when I did my overview webinar, uh, sorry, overview video on Sunday yesterday. Um, and yeah, we are very nicely in the weekly chart. So far with everything that's going on, I have to say that this is very good action. The day is young, anything can happen. If we close down minus 25 or more, it says, uh-oh, peak D coming maybe Tuesday and then we might stall. That makes us candle the close for Thursday at four o'clock, imperative to monitor because so far it's acting beautifully. But the day is young, the week is young, and even the month is young. Here we go. QQQ, one, two, three, up, still up to 35. At 361.67, leg B, it's right on uh, a resistance level. The 200 period moving average is at 357. It keeps uh, going just above and just below, and then it closes above. Let's see what it does today. It's helping the weekly, but the monthly chart is still saying this is one of the weaker charts, but really the weaker chart is the IWM, which if you look at that peak D, and then we, we kind of failed. Uh, we're still way underneath the 14-period uh, moving average in the monthly chart. Weekly chart looks very poor. The daily chart looks really nice. It looks like a, a rectangle sideways move. Ha, talk about a rectangle formation. Let's go to the dollar. Look at the dollar, rectangle formation. What's the rule of the large? In my webinars that I have, for those of you who are subscribers to my um, opening call, they just... Uh, a lot, a lot of uh, webinars, and all of them are very cogent. They give you parts of the technique of the Chapman Wave methodology. The, rec the uh, pattern that we look for in the wide rectangle formation is that if there's a quick move to the downside, and then there's a rally that holds the base, the low of the pullback from the flag pole to the high that was made, in this case in the dollar in index 99.42. That was around about March the 3rd or so, March the 7th. And then made the H pattern comes all the way back and, and it holds the left side low. Oh, wait a minute. I, I did it really? 97.71. Yes, 97.73. That's where the, uh, the little plus sign should be. So this is a peak A. Then a lower peak A, gray A, because it's underneath the previous high and the technicals are still weak, gray B. And then it goes to gray C. What's the rule of the rectangle formation? It can give you a lopsided, like a gravy cup formation. So in this case, it's like that, lopsided, and then it goes towards the high. That's number one. Number two is if there is a stair step move to the upside, it should go to a peak D, just under, right on, or just above the previous high, and then pull back into the uh, rectangle again. Well, here we are. The high today is 99.37, five cents away from the 99.42 previous high. Wow, this is the technique now. The rule of thumb is that it should do it in a smaller time frame. Oh, oh, oh. I haven't, uh, I haven't done that in a shorter time frame. Well, it did a peak A, peak A, B, C. D, e, F. It went to peak F in the shorter time frame. Now it's in a in another buy mode in the in the 120 minute chart, and that says the dollar is still the currency of respect around the world, and that's why it's holding as well as it is. Let's see how long that lasts. So far, so good. I'll be right back. Thousand Chapman, Tiger Tech, Mr. Sal, Dow's at 115. SP's up a dollar fifty. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, folks. Bells are dropping. Tiger Technicians Hour. Dow's um, down 100. S&P is down 55 cents. So the question came in, uh, Basil, we keep talking about at least a PT. What, what, what do you mean by PT? Well, just look at this five-minute chart of the E-mini. This is the S&P June E-mini. Starts off around about 2 this morning and goes peak A, peak B, peak C, pulls back and then goes above the 200-period moving average, the pink line, goes to a D and then sharp, a sharp pullback with the MACD and stochastic. But it doesn't. The green line is still green. It goes all the way to a brand-new peak A, B, C, and a D. Goes into a rectangle, a tiny little rectangle formation, and then it drops. Where does it drop to? It drops to the 200 period moving average. Is that important or is that important? Obviously, whatever works, works. In this case, that was your benchmark and it went there and then it rallied sharply. Now it's made a peak B, but the technicals are starting to show a little bit of weakness. So I suspect they'll be watching this very closely because. Uh, going under 45.29, we're at 45.35. Uh, if it does, it closes under 45.29, again for a couple of bars, a couple of five-minute bars, that's going to impact the general market. And then I think we start to pull back a little bit more. And um, so just to just answer that question. Then a bunch of questions came up. Let me just do this. Um, I, I showed you the dollar. The dollar went to a peak E at 99.49, pulls back. And within a shorter time frame, it's had uh, two buy modes that have gone to uh, a D or then a, a C. Where it's at, uh, sorry, 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 uh, between an A, B, C, in a D right now, uh, but the, uh, that's a 120 minute chart. This is an leg C, but look at the EUR, USD. Look at these patterns, how they mirror one another. Look at the euro pulling back. There's a euro dollar, makes only a peak B in the monthly chart, and then fails. Come, it hasn't failed yet because it hasn't taken out the left side low of around about March of. Uh, was it 2020? Yes, a 1.0766, uh, but it has dropped to the 1.08 area, and now it's trying to rally, and it's arching over. Now, unlike the dollar, which is testing its highs, the euro is still holding pretty well. And there's a Chapman Wave inside track right here, right here, inside track. This is what we call inside wedge target a target support line, the left side, right side price time match from the left side of 1.063 back in April or so of 2020. And it goes to the midpoint that I chose the doji candle 
of April of 2021. And what does it go to? It goes to the most recent low of 1.0806. And that's is a weekly chart, the week of the 11th of March, and it's still showing weakness in all the time frames. If you look at the USD JPY, which is the euro dollar currency pair, look at this, the way it's screamed to our heaven. I was going to do this and then I forgot. It did a nice left side, right side price time breakout in a shorter period of time. And now it's at 123.668. This is incredible action. Look at the daily chart. The stochastic's flat at 95%. That's great. On balance volume oh, is flat because it doesn't have volume. But the relative strength index is good. This is a little line that went pink right here. And the MACD is still very strong, expanding. And that's just gone to the high today of 125.101. And what we're looking at is if you're looking at the monthly chart of the dollar Japanese yen, look at this beautiful cup formation there. I also chose a particular candle. Wasn't the, It was the midpoint base of my my secondary technique, not the primary, is when you can see a beautiful cup formation or arch going to a high that says, you know what, we could have the same number of bars going from the left side high down to the low and then back from the low to the right side high or in this case in a cup formation. But in this case, I chose something else. And look, it has just missed the high that was made. This, of course, gets smoothed out, but I'll give you the price because it's a continuous contract. 125.847 was the high in June of 2015. 125.847 and the high today is 125.101 and it's a month early. Isn't that amazing? Look at the lovely technique. Oh, and the other thing I didn't finish was I was going to put this in. I saw it at the time and I didn't. I thought, ah, that's not going to happen. But this would have been the left side, right side. This would have been, sorry, the inside wedge target repellent line right here. Pink uh, on the way down. I make it green on the way up and a dashed line. So that's, that's important. Okay, so we're looking at Right, they're getting into resistance. Uh, it's going to start to slow down maybe from here. This is the dollar yen uh, currency. So we're looking basically at the yen and it's really screaming. It often goes in the direction of the Dow, sometimes not as much, sometimes much more. In this case, way more, way more impressive than the uh, dollar itself. All right, so that's that. The other thing I want you to do based on the longer term charts, just a quick question was, could I look at Mo's, um, this is Mosaic Company, phos uh, phos potash, phosphates, fertilizers. You know, I don't think I've updated the 120 minute chart. I, I won't type it in, I'll just do it right now. I'll say peak A, peak B. Nope, yep, C peak A, peak B, peak C. Pulls back and goes E, F, double top, maybe G. Yeah, so that's a G right now, G slash C in the 120 minute chart. Everything about it says there should be some kind of a digestive uh, action in uh, mosaic. You can go to so many IPI, which is uh, um, in the potash, intrepid potash, made a PG. It's also pulling back. So all of these look fantastic in terms of the monthly charts, but on a short term basis, I think we're starting to see some kind of pullback valet. Uh, Valet is uh, Valet SA, iron ore pellets, nickel, copper, ferro alloys. Um, yep, also making this right side arch formation in, in H pattern, holding really well. I believe that Veil should go to 23.19 and higher um, after that June 2021 peak C high. It's making a V shaped recovery right here. It might need a little bit more digestive phase and then it can start on its way up again. I, w I would think at 19.60 VALE, um, pulling back to the, 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 fill the little gap, you don't have to fill it all together, but somewhere in the low 19s, maybe it has to be a little bit more 1880, and then maybe it gets ready for another move up. So we're, we're watching this very, very closely. So the question came in, could I uh, finish gold? Uh, yeah, gold is in this arch formation. This is the dreaded H pattern that I always talk about. Let me see if I can get one of these things going here. Yeah, so we, three patterns I look at all the time. Straight line up or down, that's number one. Number two is a cup formation. It could be a V, but it's going from one 
level down and then back to that level? How does it test that left side high on the right side? Or in arch formation or inverted V going from one point up and then coming back again? coming back to that level again how does it test it if it breaks it the reason why this is red is it becomes the dreaded h pattern meaning once you break decisively below the left side low you can get a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside of the cup formation and this is what we weren't looking at and very often happens at a peak a or a peak b so my suspicion is that gold and it is the icon of fear geopolitical fear just there's a little amelioration of the tensions just at the moment and I don't want to get into the whole thing. I could spend an hour talking about it, but it's not worth it because uh, whatever we say, politics gets in the way. So let's just look at this to say, at 1938, if gold takes out 1900 as support, there's a chance it's going to take, quickly take out the low of 1895 in the continuous contract from I'll be back, there's a lot to talk about, and we'll be looking at crude oil. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, we're back. So silver is down 42 cents at 25.19. Also making that arch formation. Remember, with the left side low, that's really key. It's the key support will be the first level of the 22nd of March at, uh, this is the continuous contract, 24.695, takes that out. It could be a quick trip down to 24.55. And then the 200 period moving average, which has been support at 24, 24 becomes key to monitor. And any move above the high that was made on Wednesday or Thursday, above 26.18, 
20.16. No, 20.16 uh, 20. would be very, that was Salt Lake City. How many times have we seen really quick uh, peak A, peak B, peak C, and peak Ds? Oh, yeah, look at this. Microsoft goes to a low uh, 270. Is trading at 308, hit 310.50 this morning in leg D. There are so many stocks. So the question came in over the weekend, hey, going to peak D, isn't that where you become really cautious? And the answer is, when you're coming off a low, if you're going to go higher, you're going to obviously make Ds. My only thing is, when you make a really quick, oh, I should have written them down because I was running out of time. I didn't write them all down. Was it MJ? No, it wasn't. Oh, I just go. I'll I'll find some tomorrow as examples. Really quick, peak A, peak B, peak C, and peak D, um, which looked quite impressive. But ca coming off a low, I would have wanted to see a much bigger one or two of the legs should have been really strong. It's just a, a short low to a peak D and then pull back. Short in the context of the left side charts, so percentage-wise, some of these percentages are big. So uh, I'm just saying, as Microsoft is a good example that's as still in a sell mode in the uh, weekly chart it is improving the daily chart could actually be in a buy signal because the stochastics flat and 93 uh, msft trading up four, four and a half and 308.14 yeah this is good and it's above the arch high so this is this is starting to say to me that there are a number of characteristics here that as we came off the lows uh, are starting to show signs of a broadening buying phase and that to me is going to be absolutely imperative to monitor so um, a question came up about the TLT so that uh, oh no let me do this first because I, I want to do that then spend a little more time so the question on the TLT is I missed uh, I missed your update can you just do it again yes yeah, down 8.20 I mean that is one of the, maybe the second or biggest uh, pullback we've seen in quite a long time uh, down to 105 and I said earlier last week that if if the if crude oil closes under 106 there's a chance that the consolidation could go could go on a little longer in time it might not be so much in price because you've got tremendous support price wise 105 to 93 is that that i mean that's a big percentage but not when you look at where we've been so i suspect that i'm going to draw this in now and we'll just have to see does this pan out is this really the pattern that we're looking at that there's an arch formation maybe fading at peak a and that there will be a supply of oil to at least ameliorate the deterioration in, in both production and what we're seeing um, just available uh, and we'll know if a hundred uh, close below 100 says you know what the 50 period moving average of uh, 96 is probably going to be the next test a break under that says you know what crude oil could there could be a greater supply of crude oil than we're all thinking at this uh, at this moment we'll see but any move from where we are right now 105.69 with a close above the continuous contract high of 116.64 any time this week a close above that says uh oh forget it crude oil is a major commodity that's going to be um, experiencing uh, higher prices and we're going to be experiencing the pain that goes with it and wheat I'll just do this quickly wheat there's that pattern we talked spoke about Chapman wave Roman candle from 1363 and a half I think they got smoothed out plunged down and now we're going from a lowercase H pattern to a lowercase M pattern wheat is pulling back and I suspect some of these grains when I looked at most of the grains over the weekend they're ready uh, they're ready for some kind of a breather now this is going to be important TLT Lehman 20-year Treasury bond fund, nice move off the low of 127.65. Truff E, wait a minute, Truff E, what about the mirror image, which is the TBT, the ultra short Lehman 20-year Treasury T bond ETF? Well, it made a leg E at 21.97 on Friday. It's pulling back a bit here. The MAGD is still good. Stochastic's pulling back. It's now only at 80%, going under 80% says, one of your technicals is starting to deteriorate. The on-balance volume is pulling back, but it's, it's still good. Relative strength is holding well, but is pulling back. That's the gray line there in the daily chart. And the 9 is still way above the 14-period moving average. So unless yields are going to slump 
from 21.08 to 2.107 in the TBT, which is very much like the, here we go, TNX.X, in a, at a peak E, if there's no new recovery high today, made a high on Friday of 2.503. Um, we'll see what happens because under purely technical conditions, there could be a bit of a pullback. Yeah, I'd even put in a rectangle formation and say, hey, it could go a tad higher, but I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to pull back to the 2.25 area, 2.24. Um, we'll see. So what I wanted to show you is this. In my long-term charts, you know, my triple yield chart, it's in a, I'm calling this at least for now. I don't see any reason why not to call it a leg C at 26.44, 2.644 in the 30-year. And the question came in, uh, Basil, after yield curve inversions, will TBT or TBF continue to rise? Oops, I only looked at TBF the other day. I don't think I managed to notate it. TBF. Um, can you look at the Great Recession began as December 2007, in, in December 2007 and ended in June 2009 for what, when was the best time frame to own TBT? And thank you for your excellent uh, work and technique, uh, Jim. Okay, so Jim, this is what I'm looking at. I'm going to pull this back. This is the triple yield chart. The, the white is the 30-year. The brown, the little one there, is the... 10 year and the one above the brown between the white and the, the 30 year and the five year is the four is the five sorry between the white 30 year and the brown 10 year is the five year cyan colored five year fvx five year t note yield well let's go back and see So this is 2004. 2004, very, very widespread. 2005 is getting narrower and narrower. Comes 2006, it gets narrower and narrower. And just for one brief moment, there's this cluster right there. And what was the cluster time frame? Let's call the cluster time frame with a U-shaped with a uh, double top pattern. Uh, let's go to the first one, which was May of 2006. And then what happens? It pulls back and has a sudden spiral to June of 2007. The, that was June. October of 2007 was the S&P and the Dow High. So what do we see here? We see something a little different. It's not quite the same, but there is a flattening of the curve and looks to me like the five years over the 14 and there's a little cluster formation. So is it a heads up? Well, this is a little different. This is much lower down than it was. I'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So the Dow is pulling back some. You would have expected that. That extra burst of strength on Friday. Uh, I remember I was uh, driving uh, to Brooklyn and uh, listening um, to the news and occasionally tuning over to Bloomberg or CNBC or looking at the cell phone. And there was this sudden, there, everything we wanted was there. We went to that leg, D in the Dow, the S&P. Then there was this really sharp pullback. And then suddenly there was this buying spree at the very end of the day. And I'm thinking to myself, that is so, uh, it's unusual to go into the weekend with that kind of buying. That must have been fund managers just saying, you know what, I like what's going on here. I got to get in. Anything can happen, um, uh, To even to the plus side. However, um, that's the kind of give back of that last hour that we, we see right now. And that we'll see what happens uh, this time tomorrow. No, probably 1.30 to 2 o'clock tomorrow is going to be very important. So just in answer to Jim's question, Jim, there are so many factors that are different. To There is no, you know, back in 2006 and seven. The building, everywhere you went, if you were standing, at, if you're at the bank, or what, you know, just wanting to to take money out or whatever it is, there was so, there were people in the in the in the lobby saying, I'm, "I'm here for my mortgage." I mean, there was this craze that was going on, and I I see nothing like it. This this is so different. I don't ignore the yield curve factor at all. There's a there's a precedent for it. I would say, majority of times that we've ever had, uh, at least a deep recession, you've had that inversion in the yields. Um, but you've also had people talk about uh, recessions, etc., that didn't come about. But every one that has come about, I, I would say virtually every one, I can't say every single one, but virtually every one that I can recall has been because of yields, but other things were going on that were big factors. If we had, um, if we had say a Bitcoin and a revolution going on right now. Yes, it is on a short-term basis, but really, um, let's just go to Bitcoin BTC. I, in other words, I'm looking for something, another sector to absolutely command the attention of everyone, every single person, even if they didn't want it. And that's what you got in uh, the top in the, the dot-com bubble. Everyone was looking at eyeballs and counting uh, these fake eyeballs that, that were used for the, the count to say, oh, su such and such a company had an X million number of eyeballs, therefore that should soar to the upside. We've got nothing like that right now. If anything, there's the greatest nervousness we've had in ages. So all I can say is, look, Bitcoin, when you look at the 69,950 top back in uh, November of uh, 2021 down to 32,865. This is just a pretty decent rebound if you're looking at the weekly chart or the monthly chart and the daily chart. Very nice shooting above the 200 period moving average. But I'm not, 
Yes, there's a lot of talk about um, because of the Ukraine situation and Russia that Bitcoin will be used more. But I don't. I, I'm not getting that sense. I in no sector. Look at this Schwab, which is in the um, brokerage area, looks great on the monthly chart. But this is not a like everybody is clamoring to buy Schwab. Yes, it looks like there's been a huge increase in the number of people involved with something like a Charles Schwab because it's at 91.39 with the uh, 96s uh, as as key upside resistance and four points. Uh, what is this? Five percent could do that in an eye blink if everything come, comes right. But it's way near the highs. The IAI is a little different because this is a much broader. Uh, iShares broker deal uh, an e, uh, ETF, which we are long from the 45 area here, it is 103. It hit 116 back in November as well, um, and has pulled back really sharply. And now it's at uh, right sitting for a, a week on the 200 period exponential moving average at 103. So that's a better picture. Schwab is maybe very specific. But if you look at Goldman Sachs, in other words, I'm trying to point out that the whole area of the brokerage, you should see these things flying to all time highs if we were making some kind of a going into a major top. Not at this particular point. Goldman Sachs 426.16 was the high uh, back in uh, the fall of uh, 2021 and fall it in down to the 320 level. And here it is at 333. It hasn't even been able to get out of its own way. And this is Goldman Sachs. I did a webinar once and I featured Goldman Sachs. And I showed the whole 1929 situation when they went public, they were a different company, they went public, and then they were involved right going into the 1929 top. They were involved in just about, as always, every single IPO that was coming out, they were involved. There's a little different texture to Goldman Sachs now, but I think that character of the, of the company is still there. And I don't think we're going to make a major, major top until Goldman Sachs is much, much higher. Well, it did make a peak E in the monthly chart. So that monthly chart at, uh, what did I say, 426? Uh, let me go there. Yeah, 426.16 in, in November. Um, the yeah, monthly chart is actually looking weak, but the 9 is still way above the 14. The MACD is negative, stochastics at 64%. Relative strength is weak. Um, yeah. But is hell holding okay if on Thursday at four o'clock we're looking at Goldman Sachs not at three it's at three thirty three right now at three sixteen but instead is at three fifty three or higher that is going to be really important because that says that even under all these conditions a, a stock a financial like Goldman Sachs is holding well so I'm answering your question in one of my usual. Uh, um, Scrabble board, or maybe it's a chess board, answered having to look at all these different components. But I think if you don't look at the components of what's going on, you're missing. Well, look at this. What did what did Ruby say earlier on? She sent in. I don't know if I can find it, but uh, inventory. Oh man, am I going to find it? Um, I'm just getting used to our new system here with um, Discord. Uh, that's the yields. Uh, something about, oh, I can't find it. All right, well, it's there somewhere. But the the uh, what was discussed this morning in terms of, uh, oh, I thought I'd just be able to grab it in time. I, in terms of economic news, uh, there, were, there, there were greater signs of strength again today. And uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm just scrolling away. I'm not finding it. It's there. I just can't see the actual times on the, if I got the times, I know where to go. All right. So that's what I'm, I'm looking at here, that there has been at least not a modicum, but in some cases, quite, quite a generous um, gain in economic results that have been coming out. And I think as a result, that is being reflected, and that's why I'm saying the Fed has an extremely difficult uh, job right now. They should just continue with whatever it is they wanted to do and, and just do it because um, the economy in many ways is good. But I suspect there is going to be a very sudden slowdown at some point. You can't expect gas prices to be so high 
and uh, all these commodities to be so high and not impact the general market. Just absolutely. All right, so we've got uh, down 100. So yes, Jim, the cost of energies, but does that make easier? the same? I think at this point I'm saying of oh, Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Oh, well, just in this last segment, uh, a couple of questions here. Um, uh, let's see. I'm not sure if it was for me. Angela says T C N F. And that is a cannabis company trading at 20.02, went to a peak B, it's pulled back. Um, this is, if it's able to hold the, if it's a, if it doesn't break under 19.30, but it has a bit of a rally tomorrow and is able to get to the 21.06 or higher area, that's, that's, that's good action and starting to make higher highs and higher lows. But if it starts to break, and actually if it closes under 19 the next day or two, that's a problem. If you're looking at the MJ, MJ made a huge move up based on uh, news, uh, some legislative news coming out today. So far, that's not happening. It doesn't look and it's pulled back sharply. But it's nice that it's off the low of 840. This is the MJ Alternative Harvest Cannabis. Next question I had was, if I can find it here, I wrote it. Did I write it down? Oh, no, no. Yes. BRPHF. BRPHF. And that is... Um, uh, Galaxy Digital Holdings, yeah, strong leg E, way above the 200 period moving average, and it's trading at 20.70, up a dollar 67. 
um, I like this. And if we can consolidate any pullback in between, it's at 20.70. If it closes on the 18 any time this week, then you just have to be careful because if it goes deeper than the 200 period moving average, support at 16.80, that's a problem. Right now, it's holding very well. Um, and maybe I'll try to do a little bit more work on it over the, uh, in the evening. Uh, but right now, it's holding well. It's a good session today. And I, if, you, in, if you're long, I would be holding it. If you're looking to go long, give me a yell. Let's look at it again. If it does pull back to 17.80 or lower. Okay. Uh, finally, I want you to just say that I, you'd expect off the, the action Thursday and Friday that there would be a pullback today. The S&P is holding very well. The QQQ is holding very well. It's just the Dow that's been impacted by a couple of stocks, and the Dow's down 190. A, a day of rest is needed. But what you see is Tuesday going into Wednesday, higher prices in all the indexes. That'll be as well. With that closing candle.